Hello, my name is Tiffany, and I'm the dye and maker behind Lata Valley Fiber Co. You can find my shop online at latavalleyfiberco.etsy.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Lata Valley Fiber Co. Or you can direct message me lvfiberco at gmail.com. Thank you so much for joining me and taking time out of your busy day to talk about knitting, crochet, uh, spinning, um, all the fibery goodness. So today I'm going to talk about a finished crochet project, um, some new projects that I cast on and a few that I finished this week, as well as um, a few items that I'm bringing to the shop. If that interests you, stick around and let's get started. So for this week, I finished a few items. The big one I had on my plate was a crochet project a market bag that I was knitting up for a customer. Actually, not knitting, crocheting. <laughs> I've been mainly a knitter these days, so crochet is a little out of my um, vocabulary. So I knit the market bag by Stitchberry Blog. You can find them at stitchberryblog.com. And I knit this in a beautiful blue. This is a Pima Cotton by Lion Brand. So it's very soft and yet durable. And I added to the market bag a keychain that I also crocheted um, out of a two-tone um, blue and then a lighter blue. So, this bag I would say is a medium size bag. Um, I didn't really know that based off of the pattern, but um, yeah, it has very sturdy handles, um, and there's two of them. Isn't it cute? I really like it actually. I want to make myself one. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, this pattern had um, something that you did on the inside, which was you folded down the peak and then you stitched it down and you did that on both ends. And so that helps make it a flat bottom bag. Um, which I thought was a cool feature. I haven't seen that in a lot of bags, so that was kind of fun to do. And then, um, I can't remember where I was at last video, but I hadn't done, I hadn't sewn in the bottom of the bag and squared it like that. Um, so that is finished. And then I hadn't yet added the, um, the um, the straps. So what you do, it was a very interesting um, uh, construction, mainly because I haven't done crochet in a very long time. So um, I just went with what the pattern said and trusted that, and it turned out great. So they have you. Um, so you're, you're crocheting in the round, and then they have you pick up and chain 80-some 80, 80 stitches. I can't remember the exact amount. Okay? And then they have you pick up and double crochet in pattern for 20-some stitches. And then they have you repeat that. So then everything's connected, the, the straps are connected, and then you just knit in the round following that. So um, you get this nice thick strap. It's single crochet, so it's very, um, there's a little bit of stretch in there, but, and over time I'm sure it will stretch out a little bit more, which actually might be not too bad because, you know, it does fit under your arm, but then it's tucked like right into your armpit. 
So over time as it stretches, maybe that would be a good thing. It wouldn't fit right up against your armpit. Um, so yeah, and then you just bind off. It's actually very easy. Um, what You bind off by just finishing your round and then pulling the yarn through and you've got a knot. Whereas with knitting, you're binding off every stitch because they're all live. So that was fun. Now you can knit uh, market bags. So I might do that too at some point. They have a lot of patterns out there that are really cool. And this one has this nice diagonal um, slant to it, which is kind of cool. I do like that. Um, and there's some that are way more intricate as well. So I, um, following up on finishing this bag, I had purchased some rings, the rings, and then this little clasp goes with it um, to make keychains for my next market, which is coming up in a couple weeks. And so um, this is the first one I did. And I used the same yarn for this, the Pima Cotton, as well as um, I had a little yarn left over from the snoods, the dog snoods that I did last month. I had a little bit left over, so I just incorporated that into this to kind of give it a two-tone braid look. Um, and then, of course, added some fringe. <laughs> so I am gifting that to the customer along with um, the purchase of the bag because I thought that would be fun. I mean, it goes really well. So that'll be, that'll be nice. Okay, so that's it for the crochet um, bag. I'm happy to have it done. She's going to um, get it this evening. So that'll be fun. I'm excited uh, for her to have that. So following up on that, then I tried out um, a couple patterns uh, with uh, keychains. Um, and I found these on YouTube and they had tutorials that walked you through each and every step. And so this one on the bag, I did two tones and then here's the exact same pattern, <laughs> the exact same pattern only in the solid color. So, um, I don't know, you'll have to tell me which one is your favorite. I kind of feel like maybe with the solid color, the um, patterning um, is a little more clear. So, and this one is crocheted. So um, you can find this on um, YouTube. I will post a link below for the video. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. And I've watched a few, so I'm going to have to dig for it. And then this one, which I will probably end up ripping out, it was more like macrame, um, which is okay. It's just this yarn doesn't pick up the the knots as well as macrame rope. So I think it would be better maybe in that versus this cotton. So I'll probably rip this one out. It's kind of an experiment. Um, either that or it needs to be a lot thicker. So there's another one. And then this one I actually do like as well. This is also crocheted um, with the hook, not macrame. Um, so it's a pattern I will list. Actually, I could look that one up because it was the latest one that I did. Um, that one is called the Keras keychain crochet pattern. And it's called, it, the, the designer is Through the Loop Yarn Craft. 
and again um, on um, YouTube. So, so that was it for crocheting. Um, I'm still going to work on those. I've had um, someone ask for a specific type of um, keychain, so I'm going to work on that. Okay, so I don't currently have any knitting going on. I was working to finish that market bag by today, um, so I kind of left the um, socks that I was planning to cast on kind of in the uh, in the wings, so I'll cast that on probably. In fact, actually, I thought I was going would do a video of that because um, there was some interest in how what type of toe I cast on and how I knit that and then um, a few other things. So I thought I would start by casting on the toe and I'll maybe do that on this video, we'll see. Um, so my husband's birthday was this week and he was getting that pair of socks. Well, unfortunately I only finished the one sock. <laughs> so he has yet to get the pair, um, but he did try on the one sock and it fits really well. So. Um, I'm happy about that. I will just copy that um, to the other sock and with the, the end of this week, he'll have, um, or next week, next week, because today's Thursday. Um, by the end of next week or so, he will, middle of the week, he'll have a new sock. So I am going camping with some friends over Memorial Weekend. We'll be gone Friday, Saturday, and we come home on Sunday. Um, I'm actually running a 5k with my sister-in-law so looking forward to that and I will probably do a bit of knitting um, on that camping trip as well so um, yeah exciting times ahead <laughs> um, I did think that I would talk a little bit about a couple items that I'm bringing to the shop um, I had a customer contact me through my Etsy shop and ask if I had this particular light. So I, the customer wanted this really pale pink color. And um, she wanted it in the fine organic merino wool and which is worsted weight. And I only had the one skein. So she asked if I would dye her um, three more. And I said, um, I would love to do that, but I recommend just dyeing the four skeins that you want all in the same batch because with natural dyeing, it's really hard to get the exact color every time, even with the same recipe because there's so many different variations of something. The pH could be just slightly off um, which would change the entire batch to a different shade of color. So I recommended um, um, just I would dye her the four skeins that she wanted in a pale pink. So this was the sample. I was going to try and get as close as I could to this. Now this was dyed with matter root um, in a, an exhaust bath. So it's beautiful, it's very um, pale. And I did not actually have matter to be able to dye. But you can get pink, a pale pink, from cochineal, which is a bug. And so that's what I did. And the first attempt was, um, well, it it didn't turn out, as you can see. Um, one, two, three, four. Nope. Oh, yeah, it's these. Okay. So, here's the first attempt. <laughs> this is bright, bright pink and I was a bit shocked actually because I followed uh, the guidelines of Cochineal to get light pink 
and I, I dyed all five skeins in the same dye bath and it saturated so much. I was like, oh, okay. Well, not what I was going for and not what should have happened um, because I put in, you put in weight for weight of fiber and it was like 0.25% would get you the lightest pink. This is 0.25% of 400, 500 grams. <laughs> so cochineal is, if I had done that same thing with matter, I would have gotten that light pink um, because this is what I was going for. This is what I got. So this is matter, this is cochineal. Cochineal just saturated it and um, yeah, Every, everything. In fact, cochineal also, um, I ha had shifted it slightly because I was trying to, to dye it neutral and it was a little acidic. So I shifted it back to neutral and in that process got a purple so there is purple tinges throughout. You're not going to be able to see them, but um, there it's pink, but there's also some purple variation running through it as well. So, you know, it. I guess you might be able to see this um, a little bit there. It's purpley in here. There's some purple. So that was an interesting experiment. I was hoping to get the light and then send that off to the client, but um, okay, so I had prepped 10 skeins because I thought, well, if she wanted the four, if um, for some reason the first batch didn't turn out, then I would have the exhaust bath to then dye um, it, the other 10. Well, so I did that and um, again, was very surprised by the outcome. And uh, natural dyeing is just very, um, you just have to go with the flow, I guess, uh, and not stress about it, you know. Now what I should have done was bought, so I got this from my distributor, but I only bought the 10 skeins. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have bought more because I'll always use it. But um, actually not very many people are interested in the organic. They like the superwash or the um, sock yarn, which has nylon in it, which I didn't, I thought people would be more inclined to the organic, but that's okay. So this is the, other five. And this one had an interesting uh, outcome, mainly with these two, although it is somewhat filtrated through this, the other three, these were all dyed in the same bath. Yet these three are almost completely saturated and these two are, um, very variegated. The yarn did not, um, did not go through, uh, or the color didn't go through the yarn completely. So there's a lot of variegation. In fact, this light pink that's in here, it would have been what I was looking for. Um, for, for the whole batch overall, but for some reason it, um, it didn't do that. It, part of it saturated like heavily this color and then part of it didn't take it at all or took very little of it. And what's interesting is I, when I washed this after I dyed it, there was still a ton of dye in the pot. So I'm not sure why it left part of it undyed. It's interesting. Um, so yeah, the challenges of natural dye. 
But the good thing is that these, these, the color is the same, um, minus the part where, you know, it didn't, it only saturated a little bit. So this would be good to, to buy it together. Um, I don't know how I'm going to put this on my shop actually, because these two are so different. These two I could probably do together, but the other three, they're way more saturated. Um, so yeah. And then, so these were all dyed with cochineal and you can see that this is more pink and this is more purple. So there are variations of pink, but together this looks purple. So um, I had shifted it, I had to shift it several times because when you add dye and then you add fiber, um, that changes the pH a bit. So you have to, um, to get the color that you want, you have to shift it with either um, acidic something or other or an alkaline something or other um, in order to get back to neutral. So that's kind of um, an interesting <laughs> interesting uh, thing to happen. So long story short, I contacted the customer and said, well, unfortunately, I did not get the pale pink that you wanted. So, I'm going to dye it again. And um, I had to order, because I didn't order enough, I had to order um, more yarn, and I two-day shipped it, and it was here quickly, and um, the customer was very patient and very kind with the time frame that it took. Um, what's nice about the warmer weather, we've been here about um, we've had highs of 90, but it's been like 80, 85, is I'll wash, I'll dye the yarn, wash it, and hang it to dry, and within 24 hours, it's completely dry. Whereas in the wintertime in January, February, March, and April, it would take days for the yarn to dry. <laughs> so that's a, that's a hot bonus for dyeing in the summertime. So... I ordered the yarn. We still had the after bath of these two baths. Um, and I was able to just put, um, instead of dumping all of that after bath into the pot, I scooped out, um, actually my husband scooped out the um, just enough to tinge the water pink and then we put the yarn in pulled it out it looked about the right color that we wanted um, that I wanted but it needed some shifting because it was a little too pale like did it take enough that when I go to wash it um, a after the dyeing that it wouldn't all wash out so we had to take that into account because it was pretty pale so we pulled it out, checked the acidity or the pH level, added a little bit more of the dye. I think total we added um, two cups of the dye into a straight pot of just water. So cochineal is very, which it was good to know, it is very, um, what would you call that? Um, it's a good saturation. You, you don't have to use a whole lot to get coverage because then as I was processing and dumping out, it didn't, the amount of dye that I had would probably have covered 2,000 grams of fiber, maybe even more. <laughs> so... Good job, Coach Neil. I'll be dying with that again. Um, yeah. 
So anyway, these are kind of like, oops, I would probably never put them in the shop again. So I'm thinking of putting them on at a discount and it's the same base as the pale pink. It's 100% um, fine organic merino uh, wool and it's GOTS, which is uh, cert it's certified organic. It is worsted weight four ply. Um, 100 grams for 219 yards, 200 meters. And I carry this for $30, uh, $30 in my shop. So I'll probably um, drop these down 10%, possibly even 20. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in these funky pinks, then um, watch my shop I will be posting them up probably I'm, I'm headed out of town so it'll probably be next week but if you're interested look for it there it'll be under the worsted weight tab on my shop okay that's it for shop news um, easy peasy oh I am having a sale on my shop from uh, now until the 31st it's 20% off $75 or more and um, so it's off of everything so shop to your heart's content if you'd like and thank you to Debbie who did take advantage of that as well I did a custom order for her and she also ordered she saw that I was having a sale and said hey can I buy this too so I sent off her box of yarn today that was super fun to package up for her so um, yeah, I was going to bring up, okay, so on last week's episode, I actually gained, um, five, and I just looked, six, um, new viewers, so thank you for joining the fun here at Leita Valley by Wirko, um, it, I'm happy to have you, and, um, Please comment below with um, maybe what you're working on. If you're a dyer, that would be great to know too. We could share the love. And um, so I did have um, somebody comment in last week's video. I had asked, you know, what are you working on and that type of thing. And Shatika Woods said that she was crocheting. So that's awesome. Thanks, Shatika. Um, crochet is awesome I I actually this market bag um really got me into the mood to add more crochet to my daily knitting or fiber um crafting so that's awesome and then Carmen said um she was planning to knit through the summer um, not currently sure what possibly a light top out of linen so Carmen that would be interesting to um, see your progress on that and maybe what you've um, what top you've decided to knit um, I I've looked at a few in fact several podcasters have talked about they've done like a recap video not a recap video they've done a video specifically on summer tops which are linen cotton bamboo I can't think of the other one um so you know I think I watched two podcasters that had a video specifically for that and they had some of the things same things but lots of different items as well so that uh Carmen you'll have to let me know what you decided to knit what top you decided to knit so um yeah so leave a comment below tell me what you're working on what summer knitting um or crocheting you're planning to do i um i had talked about a couple uh, a cardigan and a sweater last week and i um i have not picked out the yarn yet so I have a market coming up June 3rd and I'm kind of in that mode of, okay, well, I have my yarn. That's what I'm selling at the market. But then I need things that are not as 
expensive because you kind of want a full range of price cost, I guess. Um, I think my highest item is my hats, which are $35. But then my yarn, the highest is $30. So, and the, I think the lowest is $22.50. So that, that's a pretty good range, I feel like. But um, the reason I want to do like the crocheted uh, keychains is those will be five to ten dollars depending on how um, how much goes into them so um, you know that could be more into people's budget as well at these markets so that's kind of um, my thought on that I that's what I'm gearing up for so after that I will probably cast on both of those uh, I'll pick out yarn and cast them on because I would like um, them by the end of summer. So I better get busy. <laughs> um, I'm a fairly fast knitter. Um, like like a one um, one pair of socks, which is two two socks, will take 18 hours to knit. Um, so this is my husband's uh, birthday sock. And this sock took nine hours to knit. So, um, and so 18 hours total for a pair of socks. Um, yeah, can't remember where I was going with that, but um, I guess I was going with, where I was going with that is that, um, I obviously knitting a sweater takes longer than a pair of socks. So if I get started now, then they'll probably be done by September. You know, as I'm doing other things as well. So, okay, that is it for projects that I'm working on. I um, am going to cast on the other, the other, the mate to my husband's sock. So I thought I would take you along on my cast on process. Um, so stay tuned for that. That'll be right after um, this video. And then other than that, um, have a lovely Memorial weekend, um, remembering the sacrifices that our military has um, gone through to keep our country free and, um, and enjoy the time with your family as well. So. Um, have a great day and I'll see you next week. Okay, so this is the yarn I'm using. It's the Patton's Croy Sock FX in the colorway hmm, Clover. And I am using Clover Needles DPNs. Um, these are 3.25 millimeter US 3 and the recommended size is actually a um, US 2 but I found that this size works um, best for the fabric that I want so I'm just gonna go with it I usually cast on um, 12 stitches for each needle. I start with two needles and I leave enough of a tail uh, for 12 stitches and then a little bit to weave in. And um, yeah, so here we go. We'll just get started and um, I don't know what method this is. I saw it on YouTube at one point, I think.
Okay, so that's 12. And you can see that I have um, quite a bit of tail left. So um, that'll be good. I can weave that in. So now I'm just going to knit across. I have 12 stitches on each needle. And um, that's going to get me this shaped toe here where it's a little bit more square. And um, the first round I just knit and I'm going to knit both the tail and the working yarn in together. So I weave it in as I go. And the first round is always a little finicky. Um, but after the first round, it gets better. And I am just going to knit the first round. I don't increase until the second. I don't count the cast on as a round, I guess. That's what I am saying. Okay, that is the end of the first round, and on this round I will increase, and I'll show you how I do that. The sun has gone behind a cloud, so hopefully you're still able to see this. Um, now, this is the second round, so I'm going to increase, and you'll notice that there's two stitches per, um, per loop. Um, but that is just, I weaved in my end as I went. So do pick up, um, just make sure that you pick up both of those. And I always just knit the first one. And then on the second, I knit, and then I knit through the back. And that is called the KFB, knit front back. And then you knit across to the second to the last which is this one and I knit front and I knit back and then I knit the last one okay so two increases on that needle and you do it for the same on the other needle so we're going to knit the front one or the first one and then the second one we're going to knit through the front and then go to the back and knit through the back and then pull it off and kind of tighten it up a little bit. Then we're going to knit across to the second to the last, which is here. Okay, so we're going to knit through the front and then knit through the back and knit the last one. Okay, so that's a four, um, four increases that round. And this is knitting in the round. I'm just, um, I'm working two needles because it's a little easier right now until I have more stitches. So now on this round, which is the third round, fourth round, I am going to just knit around and make sure you're nice and snug on the first couple of stitches. That way um, you won't get any gap gapping at your toe, um, especially when you're doing the increases. It can sometimes get a little gappy there. 
you don't want your little toe sticking out through a hole that you forgot to snug up. So, okay. And I am just keeping track of what would be the front and what would be the back of my sock. So this would be the back because it's the last, um, the last before I um, do another increase row. Okay, and then one more time, I'm going to show you the increases. And this would be the front, uh, the top of the foot. So again, I'm going to just knit that first one and snug it up and then knit front and back. And then knit across. and knit front and back and knit the last one. Okay, so that was the first increase. Now this is the bottom of the foot, so also the same increase. I'm gonna knit the first one and then knit front and back and knit across to the second to the last. Okay, second to the last, I'm going to knit the front and the back before sliding that stitch off and then knit the last one. And you keep increasing until you have the amount of stitches that you need. And so this is my husband's sock, so he's going to need at least 72 stitches. Um, around. So that's what I'm going to increase to. There's 72 stitches before I then just stop increasing and knit um, the inches that I need before I start the heel. Now, at this point, I am actually going to add the next needle for the back of the, or for the bottom of the foot. As you increase um, to those 72 stitches, you're going to need either um, circular needles or, um, or an extra DPN um, because it's going to get tight and difficult to do. Because this is basically knitting in the round, but you've got two needles with no cord. So, okay. So, if you look at it this way, um, this is the top of my of the foot, and this is the heel. And um, you're always starting on this side of the sock and knitting in the round. So that's the beginning of the toe. And that's how I do all my toes, actually. I don't very, sometimes I'll do, like for a woman's foot, I might, instead of casting on 12 stitches, I'll do eight or 10, um, depending on their foot size. Um, for myself, I usually do 10. So, yeah. Um, so, that's how I do my toes. I hope you found that helpful. And again, I'll just keep increasing in that same every other round until I have the 72 stitches that I need, or however many. Um, usually, I'm between 58 and 62 for my own foot, so... Thank you for joining me today on this little toe tutorial. Have a great day.